talking about Ironman Tulsa, the bike course. I do have a bike course review put up on my website as a blog. Um, check it out, check the blog post, check all the past posts. I think it's on the current page, uh, but it's a little bit more in detail what I kind of think about the course, the initial take on it. But I want to throw out there because there's been a lot of chatter about, and it's an important topic, especially after I've done uh, Ironman Chattanooga. Uh, I've done 2014, uh, 18, and 19 now, and 14, uh, what I recall, the roads are in much better condition. So 17, 18, there's a lot of cracks, a lot of potholes, a lot of stuff to be watching out for. Uh, some pretty serious conditions in some spots where you had to slow down or else you're going to have problems. So just want to get you guys prepared for what I've been seeing out there. Uh, maybe you know some of you may have more time than others to kind of search for Facebook groups and get information as it's coming along. Um, since I'm kind of into this all day long, I kind of see all the posts and kind of pick and choose which one I think are kind of good information to have. So I want to throw out there, um, Brian and Tulsa looking over at the bike course, the actual bike course conditions, the roads. Um, as I mentioned in the past, I was living in Tulsa for a little bit for work. I uh, also covered the area for another job. So I've been there often and, um, Road, driven around many of the roads, and you know some roads are great, and some roads are not so great. Um, it's kind of like maybe any area, but um, unfortunately, they don't put as much effort as I would like to see in road conditions as far as being a cyclist. Um, a lot of the roads don't have curbs, so it's just kind of a sharp drop off. So cycling around there makes me a little bit nervous personally. Um, but that being said, they don't, the winters aren't too harsh there, so they don't get the freezing thawing and all in the wood here like in Kansas City or up north. So they do get snows and stuff once in a while, so there is opportunities for them to throw salt and scrape roads and do all that kind of other stuff that, that really makes uh, problems for the roads. But there's also, and we'll kind of go over it, a little bit of, uh, I guess, uh, silver lining uh, to, the, to the dark clouds is um, I think they're really getting ready for this race and they're doing things to have it really prepared to really show off the city and show off the course. So <clears throat> let's dig into it. So I always tell people, and, and like I said, I posted the, the course overview on my blog. So if you just go to set the pace track on that common hit blog section, um, you'll find this, the, the course map and everything. So know the course. Um, it may change a little bit. So keep hitting the Ironman site too and get the updated course map. Uh, just so you're kind of aware. You know, there are, there is 51 feet, 5,100 feet of elevation gain on the bike. So there's going to be some sections where there's going to be some decent amount of climbing. So it's not going to be a cream puff. It's not going to be a, a flat, fast course. Um, but for me personally, training around Kansas City, we do have a lot of hills running here. So I'm personally not too bit out of shape about it. You know, Chattanooga, I think, had what, 4,800 feet of climbing. It was just kind of rolling hills and there's a few climbs and stuff. So I'm not too concerned with that necessarily. Uh, but if this is going to be your first pull, I would definitely take that into consideration and be doing a lot of strength work, especially if you're an off-season program like should have for my group. There's some power stuff in there. There's some uh, pyramid sets. There's some hill intervals, um, some strength and conditioning for that bike <clears throat> that will really set the base to be able to go into your training and have a good foundation for that strength component you're going to need to get through 112 miles of a fairly just tough climbing course. Um, so you want to be ready for that and be ready. There is a separate T1 and T2. So a lot of people kind of, you know, I wouldn't say freak out about it, but they get a little bit tweaked, a little bit anxious about it. So there is to be a separate T1 and T2. So keep that in your mind. So you start at the lake and you end down downtown where the T2 is in the finish line. So just be aware of that kind of overall mentally um, of kind of the key components of that course. So, what I've been finding, uh, and people have been posting, you know, uh, visual stuff, you know, photos, videos, um, just text reports of the areas. So there are some rough surfaces, um, but the overall um, what I'm gathering is that they're going through in the city is counting whoever is controlling them. They're going out and repaving the really bad sections right now. So September and October of this year, 2019, they're already paving and getting ready for 2020. Um, so those sections should be good for next year. Um, you know, if they keep, if the race keeps continuing, um, obviously over time, you have to still take care of the roads. So hopefully they're going to have an overall master plan, at least to kind of address those roads in particular, you know, being selfish, doing the race out there. You know, that's all the roads I care about. I don't necessarily care about the rest of the roads, but I digress. Um, 52 from Rock Hill. 
um, when you, you get on 52 from Rock Hill Road, there's a long, slow hill, and the, the road conditions are kind of eh. So that's one section you might want to kind of be careful for. Um, and, and I tried to stay away from, you know, the specifics. I mean, you can go to Facebook groups and just type in keyword search road and then you can pop up all this stuff. Um, but like I said, the pay, they're doing a lot of repaving at this point in time. So there's a lot of smooth sections. Um, it, Kiwa is in bad shape. Um, I don't, I haven't seen anything that anybody said that they've been repaving those. Um, Barnsdall to Sky Took has been repaved. Um, so yeah, I didn't catch any other specifics, but a lot of people have said that they've gone back and you know they, they first did the ride and then the, the road conditions are a little questionable. It's gonna be a little bit interesting, um, especially it's not a closed course. So always be mindful of that when you're, you should not just be spacing out when you're riding the bike, you should be focusing on nutrition, hydration, and being aware of cyclists around you and being aware of the weather conditions and being aware of the road. So you're always scanning ahead. You're always looking for cracks. If you're coming up on somebody to overtake them and you can't see directly in front, be aware because if they swerve all of a sudden and there's a crack, get it with your front wheel, you're over, your race is done. So just be mindful, especially if you're in an aero position. I always tell people, you know, when you're coming up behind somebody, if you're slowly overtaking them, you know, you know, you have your, your time limit and you want to avoid those drafting penalties, but you're coming up behind them. Don't just sit there and ride in the arrow right behind it because if they make a sudden move, they break really hard, you're both going to eat it. You're going to be done for the day. So make sure you're on your drops, especially when you're passing people. And once you get past them and you can see the road again, get back on there. Because right now, unless they go repay the entire course, there's going to be some sections going to be kind of tough. Um, and from the videos I've seen, it's just basically, I would call it regular weather pavement. I mean, uh, you're going to have the alligator cracking and some of the black, the tire ruts and stuff like that. So that's also an important consideration is, is picking a line to go through. So especially in Chattanooga, there's some chip seal areas, but over time that chip seal gets a little bit smooth in the tire ruts. So if you're in the tire ruts, you're good. But in other sections, if you're in the tire ruts, it's kind of bumpy and not very good conditions. So if you're in the middle, kind of in between the tire ruts, that's a good spot to be in. Or sometimes I'll, I will ride the line on the side of the road because it's actually in pretty decent shape. And if you're on the actual paint, it kind of covers up the chip seal and it's actually a little less rolling resistance. So, you know, just be aware, but that's also where cracks could be hiding alongside the road, especially if it's well-traveled by heavy equipment. Um, you know, I used to intern uh, for for the city of Olathe and used to do pavement um, rating and rankings and reviews so we could kind of prioritize which roads need to be fixed the soonest. And so I'm keenly aware of, you know, the alligator cracking, the other spider cracking, um, just regular cracks in the roads that happen and what you can patch with tar, what you need to go through and you actually need to rip out the road and repair the base for, and things you could just do a simple overlay for. So if they're repaving now, I'd be interested to see if they're milling it and then repaving it, which is a little bit better solution. Otherwise, they're just putting a tar layer on there and putting a, a layer of asphalt on there just to cover up all the imperfections in the top layer. And hopefully it's in good enough condition that the base isn't still eroding. So by the time we get to May, it goes through winter, all these cracks start reappearing and it's kind of all for nothing. Um, like I said, Tulsa is a little bit, it's Southern. So the weather is not as, uh, I guess, we'll say bad or severe as, as Kansas City, but I mean, it does get cold, it does get freezing, um, but the cycles just don't go as deep and as long as Kansas City. So you gotta just be aware uh, when you're down there, even if it's been repaved, you know, pay attention to the road because that's the last thing you want to do is hit a crack, a crack or a pothole uh, and end up either on the ditch uh, going over the handlebars or on laying on the road in a heap or even just lose your water, your water bottle, your nutrition, your hydration or stuff off your bike um, because technically you get peed for that for littering if something pops off your bike. So just be aware of that. Um, even if it's repaved, you can still have problems with it. But I always tell people, have your head on the swivel, even if it's places you've already ridden. You know, in, in a day, a crack could show up out of nowhere, and it could be wide enough that your tire could fit in just enough. They could grab your tire and then just throw you off your bike, and your day's done, your year's done, you have to do some um, rehab or whatever. Um, so just be aware wherever you're riding and, and be scanning about 10 feet in front of you, especially during a race. Um, the first 30 minutes, you'll be all jacked up, amped up, and trying to get out there, which I highly discourage. Don't go out and hammer it at first. 
start settling in, get your hydration, your nutrition on point, you know, sipping every 15 minutes, working on your nutrition, because that first half of the bike is the time to get it all in. By the time you get done with the bike, you're ready to get off the bike. Uh, you're to be to the point where your stomach may be not processing as well. So that beginning of the bike is very crucial. And just make sure you're paying attention. Don't just space off and start, you know, just wandering through. Don't do the, you know, just hands and handlebars for a picture or whatever. Just make sure that you're keenly aware of the road conditions because they, like I said, they are being paid, but there could be sections that are still not paid and could be problems. There are some videos that I put up a little page for that I kind of try to collect as much as possible. So set the page to backslash videos underscore Tulsa. So if you go there, you can check out the videos and uh, I'll post a link in the, uh, uh, the comment section of the video on YouTube and I'll put that in the uh, replay uh, for anybody that gets it. So you'll be able to go through and just kind of see someone actually drove the course and put it in two different videos. And when you look at the date, I believe it was in October or so early October, so there may be some sections that have already been repaved, but it'd be a good opportunity to kind of go through and at least see the roads, see the area you're going to be going through. Uh, do do take into consideration, it's in May, um, so it'll be, you know, they might be going through a little bit, you know, the, the trees and leaves are changing and stuff like that, so it might be a little bit greener uh, come race day. Uh, but just to be aware, um, you know, you can see the sections that are kind of open to the elements, or if it's tree, you get a little bit of protection, so. Um, that'd be good videos just to watch, um, maybe put it on triple speed because they drew, drove the entire course, so it could take a minute to watch it all. So I, it's probably not the most exciting watching, but you at least kind of hop through and kind of see the course as they're driving through. So that's basically it. 